In the second part of the presentation relative to principles of orthodontic preparation for orthognatic surgery, I will talk to you about the third principle of our list, that is the control of transversal dimension. It is very important to decide which kind of approach you will have to follow treating the transversal dimension of surgical passion. In order to do this, you will have first of all to measure the entity of discrepancy between upper and lower transversal dimension. This is relatively easy to do. You have to measure the distance between the mesiolingual cusp of the upper first molars and the distance between the central fossa of the lower first molar, because this is the normal occlusion. The mesiolingual cusp of the upper first molar is occluded in the central fossa of the lower molars. When you measure this, you will have to take into account eventual dental varor compensation. So, if you have, for example, a class 3 patient in which typically the lower molars are lingually tilted in and the upper molars are flared out, you will have to take this into account when measuring. So, to what you measure, you will have to add more discrepancy because you have to think that you will correct this flaring and the lingual collapse of the lower molars before surgery. Anyway, after you measure the discrepancy and you integrate the correction for dental velar compensation, you will have basically three kind of scenarios. You can have a discrepancy that is less than 5 mm, a discrepancy that is more than 7 mm, and a discrepancy that is between 5 and 7 mm. When you have more than 7 mm of discrepancy, you will need, always, to perform a surgical assisted rapid maxillary expansion before, afterwards, performing a second surgery, which you will have a fourth one, that may be also, again, with three pieces. This because it's impossible to expand a maxilla in a stable way more than 7 mm with a Lefort 1 with 3 P's. So in this occasion, when you have more than 7 mm of discrepancy, to perform a SARPE before the Lefort 1, it's an, not a choice, it's an obliged path. The decision is to be taken when you've got less than 5 mm of discrepancy, or if you have a discrepancy between 5 and 7 mm. When you have less than 5 mm, you can basically choose between making a SARPE to solve the discrepancy and afterwards a Lefort 1. Or if you can do directly a Lefort 1 in 3 piece after orthodontic preparation. To me, it is clear that it's best to do a Lefort 1 with 3 piece. This for two reasons. Number one, with the Lefort 1 with 3 pieces, it's much easier to control the occlusion. Very often, after a SARPE, you will have a very regular occlusion that is very difficult then to treat orthodontically. And plus, if you make a SARPE and then you make a Lefort 1, you need two operations, whereas if you prepare orthodontically and then you have a Lefort 1 3 pieces, only one surgical intervention. So for discrepancy lower than 5 mm, to me, would be the best to make a Lefort 1 3 piece. The only limit that you have to remember to this is that not every surgeon wants to perform a Lefort 1 with 3 piece. And of course, if the surgeon doesn't feel confident in performing such procedure, you cannot really force that. The cases that are also very much to discuss are patients in which we have a discrepancy that is between 5 and 7 mm. For this passion, I would also suggest to make orthodontics and then only a Lefort 1 with 3 P's. But this has got some exception. Number one, patients that have got a low palatal vault. Patients that have got a low palatal vault, they have the problem that it will be difficult to expand during surgery because it will be difficult for the surgeon to stretch the, the soft tissue of the palate. For this reason, patient with low palatal vault, it may be better to do an ortho a SARPE, so a surgical assisted expansion, and afterwards, after preparation, a Lefort 1, 
that can be single or in three piece according to the situation that you find after preparation. Another situation which you may need to do that is when you need to extract only the upper arch. So if you have got typically a class 3 in which you've got no crowding in the lower and crowding in the upper, you may want to perform a sarpe if you've got a discrepancy between 5 and 7 millimeters because this will allow you to solve the crowding without having to extract. And this can be an advantage to shorten the treatment time and to facilitate actually the fitting of the arch length of the upper and the lower. If, as said before, if the discrepancy is higher than 7 mm, there are plenty of studies that tell you that on average, for an average surgeon, it will be difficult to achieve stability of expansion. So in these cases, it's best to do a surgical assisted expansion and afterwards a Lefort one, most likely again in three piece. To show you this approach, I will show you this example. This patient, please notice the black corridors at the corner of the mouth. The patient has got a class 3 with a discrepancy that is over 7 mm, once that we consider the compensation of the lower arch. The patient gets a SARPE as first intervention that will allow me to avoid extractions. This is the look after the SARP, and please notice that the patient still has black triangles at the corner of the mouth. This is the intraoral aspect, and you can see also that the occlusion is very complicated. It would be very difficult to treat this patient with the SARP as only intervention. The patient is prepared for surgery, is prepared for a three-piece maxilla, and this is the final occlusion after trapeze maxilla with expansion and advancement. Now, this is the final picture, and you can see the difference between start after surgical assisted expansion and after maxillary advancement. This shows you an important point. The black corridors, they are not influenced so much by the transversal dimension, they are influenced much more by the anteroposterior dimension. In orthodontics, we have the tendency to think that black corridors at the corner of the mouth, they are determined by a transversal problem in the upper arch. Actually, they are mostly determined by a retrusion of the maxilla, as you can see very clearly in this case. Anyway, to sum up the transverse problems, under 5 mm of discrepancy, I advise orthodontics plus Lefort 1 with 3 P's, between 5 and 7 mm can be surgical assisted maxillary expansion plus a Lefort or an isolated Lefort 1 3 piece, depending on the characteristic of the palatal vault and the need of extraction in the upper arch. If the discrepancy is more than 7 mm, the need is to for a surgical assisted expansion and after preparation another intervention with Lefort 1 with 1 or 3 piece, depending on the occlusal situation.